Screenless. Hello and welcome to another episode of Creative Cuppa. It's really nice to chat with creative people out of my area of expertise. I'm learning a lot about all sorts of different things. Sometimes, though, it's nice to chat with fellow composers. And today you'll hear a chat I had with a good pal of mine, Dan Watts, uh, probably best known to you for his work with his brother Sam on the BBC series The Sarah Jane Adventures and Wizards vs Aliens. Dan and I have known each other a few years now, and uh, we've been podcasting together about a year and a half. I'll put links to all that in the show notes. The challenge with Dan is fitting a chat into 15 minutes, as we regularly witter on for several cuppers. And I suppose the challenge we both face as composers is balancing writing to brief on those paid gigs with exploring our own creativity and giving time to let that breathe and evolve. Both are important, I think. So, if you have your cuppa at the ready, here we go. Dan Watts, composer, producer, synth nerd, and co-host on the Making a Soundtrack podcast, welcome to Creative Cuppa. Hello. Hello. Uh, Let's see if we can tackle all of those things in 15 minutes or so. Uh, You've been busy on the composing front of late haven't you uh yes yeah well when uh lockdown hit call it one call it two call it lockdown three whichever (laughs) whichever one you want to pick um like a lot of creatives i just sort of decided it was time to throw myself at something so there was lots of little projects that i didn't have finished that i wanted to get done uh so i did that i had a youtube thing for a whole year where i posted a video every week so I did 52 of those, which was just bonkers. Uh, that's way more work than I thought it was going to be, as all these things are. <laughs> well, that was video as well, wasn't it? It was video as well as audio, yeah. So not only was I composing something, I was also then performing it to camera, then mixing it, then editing said performance, and then posting it online. So yeah, it was a, it was a lot of work. But I decided I really liked some of them, so I was going to turn those into an album. So I've done that. That's done. And just sorting out release date for that. I've been working on two personal albums as well. And I've just started uh, an animation for the BBC. Awesome. Uh, Are you able to spill any beans on that? Or Yeah, it's only a short. It's part of the BBC New Creatives thing. So um, it's a load of fun. I've been doing sound design as well as the music and it's not a style that I normally do because they wanted a very animated style of music so Mm. very much the Mickey Mousey yeah that that phrase I mean in Hollywood films Mickey Mousing is seen as a bad thing isn't it yes well it's it's an actual phrase Mickey Mousing Mickey Mousing yeah where you you literally just follow the actions on yes. screen with the music. Yeah. It's really spelling something out on screen. It really, yeah, it is. It's, it's a little over the top. Um, I yeah. managed to do it. I was working on a scene yesterday, and normally when you do something like that, you have to do quite a lot of tempo changes right, and yeah. quite a lot of odd time signatures. I did a whole sort of minute and a half section at 150 BPM, and just all I had to do to get it to fit was two bars of 5-4, and everything else was in 4-4. I was quite amazed. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. There is nothing you like more than tinkering in your studio. Indeed. On your whole range of synthesizers. Yes. Uh, and you mentioned last year you did a whole year of tinkering, and that was on the synthesizers, wasn't it? It was, yeah. What first drew you to the world of synths, which <laughs> sounds like well, a, an 80s music shop? <laughs> I, well, you probably have to go back to the 80s, actually. And um, ah. I think it was probably. Like a lot of people my age, we all watch Top of the Pops. Mm. And I loved the theme tune to Top of the Pops. At that time, it was The Wizard by Paul Hardcastle. Ah. And I bought it, they released it, and I've still got that seven-inch single now. And it, it had the Top of the Pops, the 80s Top of the Pops thing on the front. And when you turned it over on the back, there was a picture of Paul Hardcastle with his permed 80s hair. 
and two <laughs> Yamaha synthesizers that seem to be floating in space with the cables they weren't even plugged in you could see the power cables were floating in space yeah. as well and i just thought that's the coolest thing ever yeah. so i asked for a synthesizer and i got a and it had to be a yamaha one because of that picture and i got a yamaha pss 470 which is a little mini keyed thing with a a load of presets and things on it and it's awful but it does have a little fm synth engine in it which is a bit weird Do, i've i've still got you still it. have it yeah wow. i've still got it i still use it in fact it's in a couple of the tinker tuesdays ah um, lovely but uh that's what first got me into it and then later on as i started listening because I, I, I was a massive metalhead as an early teenager so it was all guitars and ooh, all that kind of stuff and i absolutely <laughs> loved it and i'm just, in my and, mind i'm going on the timeline of of dan with the miami vice outfit on going uh, i've got the man i also <laughs> did, that is another that one yeah Jan Hammer, I have uh, I have the uh, Crockett's theme twelve inch as well. Yeah, fantastic. That's a great piece of music, actually. It is a wonderful piece of music. Yeah. Wonderful piece of music. Uh, he was a great, great composer. That fella. Yeah. So yes, you were saying you went into kind of metalhead phase. Yeah, I went into metalhead phase for a bit, and uh, through that discovered. My dad was always a, a Tomita fan. And Jean-Michel Jarre, so there was always that kind of stuff going on. He loved. I mean, I can remember him sitting there and listening to The Planets by Tamita and me thinking, what the heck is this? I mean, obviously, I knew The Planets, but it's, like, so different. So mm. that was always an influence in the background as well. And then I discovered Nine Inch Nails, sort of early <laughs> 90s. That's quite and a leap. Yeah, but they would, they, you know, they would kind of going in with the, the sort of metal thing. They weren't metal, but they had really aggressive guitars and stuff. And they were really aggressive, like a lot of the metal stuff. And a lot of, mm. I think a lot of young male adults like <laughs> yeah. that kind of stuff. So I, I kind of fell into that and really liked that and, and was just, just blown away by an EP called Broken. And then th- what followed that was The Downward Spiral, which is like a, a, a now a very famous album and just listening to that and trying to piece together how it was created made me realize that I needed to change direction because I didn't being a guitar player and a fairly decent guitar player I could be a guitar player in a band but that's not what I wanted I wanted to create sonic soundscapes and I thought synths was one of the best ways of doing that yeah Uh, and obviously that led on uh, evolved into you becoming a composer Listeners can hear uh, a lot more about your journey into composing in the first season of Making a Soundtrack, which we've done together, uh, which is yes. a podcast. Listeners can enjoy the stories of how we met and our journey through that, all for free in their podcast app at the moment. Indeed. It's into its second season now. How would you, how would you describe it? Well, it starts... The first season is us, to be quite frank, us actually properly getting to know each other. Yeah, Whilst yeah. also composing an album, all based around uh, film and TV music, yeah. and then and and it's great, and we interview so many amazing guests in that. I think there's like nineteen episodes. Oh, it's, yeah, yeah. And it was our first podcast, wasn't it? So it was yeah. a little bit to the wire sometimes. <laughs> um, you know, booking a guest on a Wednesday, and then the podcast came out on the Friday. So. Yeah, it yeah. could be. It, it was a lot from that. We learnt a lot <laughs> from that podcast. Uh, and then the second series, the idea was to have, to focus purely on the orchestral side of things and to mm. look at all of the people that are involved, not just the composer, but absolutely everyone that's involved along the yeah. way of getting that score done, dusted and underneath the yeah. actual film or TV show. That whole show. ecosystem. And and the guests have been so lovely, haven't they? Have, oh, just amazing. Willing to give up their time and, and all their stories and everything. And, of course, we have the amazing Tristan Noon, who's Mr. an Noon. orchestrator who's worked in the London studios for, for, I say, many years. I mean, he's barely out of shorts. but He's 12, yeah. <laughs> but he's been doing it since he was five. But uh, incredibly experienced. Yeah, yeah I mean, he's just... <laughs> he's unbelievably talented. He's a fantastic composer, He's extremely good at orchestration and copying. He's a thoroughly nice chap. Uh, He's got amazing hair. I really don't like him. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. No, he's just he's just fab. He's just there's no surprise he's where he is because of how Absolutely. just utterly fantastic he is. Yes. Yeah. So that's making a soundtrack. Yeah. Where can people find you online if they want to go and see some of your Tinker Tuesdays or catch up with what you're doing at the moment? Where can people find you? So Instagram, I'm Dan J Watts on there or YouTube. I am working on a website, but it's ready to go, isn't it? It's ready to go. You just need to press the go live button. <laughs> yeah, which I will do at some point. <laughs> nice one. Nice one. Well, you have lots going on on your Instagram account. Uh, you're pretty active on there, so people can go and have a look there. I'll put the links in the show notes for you. But for now, oh, hang on. Thanks for joining me for a cuppa. What actually are you drinking? Because it, it's very, very specific, isn't it? Yeah, Yorkshire Gold. Yorkshire Gold. Yorkshire Gold always. Well, thank you ever so much for joining me for a cuppa. You're welcome. Thank you, Gareth. Thanks again to Dan and his Yorkshire Gold for his musings. I always find it really interesting to find out how other composers started out. It's like many creative jobs. There are so many routes in and very few rights or wrongs. If you're starting out as a composer, feel free to get in touch through the website or on the social media using at ScreenlessPod. By the way, that other podcast that Dan, Tristan and I have been doing is out now and well into its second season. And as you heard from Dan, it's all about the journey of the orchestral score from composer to screen. Great stuff. Finally, if you've enjoyed this episode, let me know. The links are in the show notes and even better, let other people know by writing a review or sharing your favourite episodes. Until next time, thanks for joining me for a cuppa. <laughs>